A former Nigerian senator, Shehusani, says the EFCC claim on the $24,000 extortion is false and a plan to tarnish his reputation and mute him. He spoke on Friday for the first time since he was detained by the EFCC. I still have with me um, legal practitioner Raymond Nkanebe. Thank you very much for staying with us. You're welcome. He's basically saying this is politically motivated. Considering the fact that he's been a critic of this government, what do you say? Oh, well, uh, let me just try to put this in, in perspective. Yes, I consider that Shio Sani has been a, um, a very vocal critic of this administration and also the air fire administration in Kaduna State. But I don't think that completely absolves him of criminal culpability, right? You can also, the fact that you're a government critic does not mean that you cannot commit a crime. So let's, let's get that um, settled. But, but if he strongly believes that um, what is happening so far with him is uh, uh, a bit of trying to um, politically motivated, well, um, I, uh, he is entitled to those, uh, uh, those, those beliefs. Uh, Sheikh Usani is quite, um, is quite a, an, an honorable man. He's one of the uh, few politicians of his generation whom I can vouch for, given his, uh, his involvement with uh, the Nigerian politics, dating as far back as the military regime of uh, General Sani Abacha. Um, but I would have thought um, uh, the EFCC said that they are acting based on a petition written by one um, um, Al-Haji Dauda, Dauda and Sani, yeah. a businessman in Kano State. And so if, uh, we, if they are acting based on this petition, uh, I, I have not been privileged to see the content of, of the petition. Uh, we have just been told, what we have been told so far is that um, he is alleged to have, um, he was asked to, he was, he, he, he's accused. He's accused of getting, uh, starting this sum of money uh, in, uh, to, in the end to confer Influence. advantage to the businessman due to his, con his connection with the EFCC chairman. So, so what do you make Mandu. of Serap? Serap has reacted mm -hmm. via its Twitter handle and it's saying that the EFCC is violating both the national and international law by detaining uh, the former senator. Uh, in your legal opinion, are they, I mean the EFCC, violating any laws by detaining him? They've gotten an order already. Well, I, I, I agree with Serap and I condemn the move by, by the EFCC to get an order to detain him for 14, 14 days, right? The, the normal practice is for um, law enforcement agencies to, um, uh, upon a complaint, upon a criminal complaint, to investigate the complaint. Now, the process of that investigation entails to inviting the complainant and also the, uh, the, the, the suspect. You invite both of them in an open hearing, so you ask questions, and based on the representations from both sides at the, during the course of investigations, you, the, the, law, the particular law enforcement agent will now, be, uh, will now convince itself whether it has enough evidence to actually prosecute or not. Right? Well, the, a judge gave that order. Yeah, well, they, they, yeah a, a judge gave it. It's an ex parte order, as I understand it to be. An ex parte order, by the nature, means that the other party was not... Uh, was not heard before the order was granted. Usually when persons go to court and seek for expertise order, they try to embellish stories and give, make statements that will impress the judge to grant uh, such an order. But I understand Sheikh Hussani and his legal team will take steps to vacate that order and perhaps bring to the judge's no, no, knowledge the other side of the story that was clearly uh, shot out from but it, wouldn't from you wouldn't you say i'm i'm not a legal person i have yes. no clue what that is but wouldn't you say that it it smacks of irresponsibility for an order to be given for such a highly placed nigerian to be arrested without taking into perspective both sides of the story that because from a layman's position the law is blind it's it doesn't go, you check but you just said it to yourself yes, so yes. why would a, a judge give this order for this man to be detained well it's also very strange it's also very strange to me and um it's one of those things that we've been facing with um, the, the Nigerian judiciary, right? Um, being not, um, but, uh, not, uh, not um, um, being so hasty in granting some of these, um, uh, of these, of these orders. You expect them, you expect them in, a, in a case of this kind to ask the commission to put the other party, to put uh, Sheikh Hussani on notice that he should be 
head. Because I don't see how you give an order to deprive, to, to deprive a citizen of his constitutional right to liberty and freedom of, of movement. Like it is, it's, it offends, but it offends the African Charter of Human and People's Rights. It offends the Ethnic Constitution. And you wonder why a judge But is there any grounds? Maybe fear that the person will abscond or something. Is there any grounds for a, a judge to make that decision without taking the other person's uh, narrative into account? OK, yes. There are grounds whereby a court might uh, would grant an order asking that the person be, uh, the person detained. be detained. They are ground, but I, given from what we've heard so far in the media, I don't think there is any such uh, ground to have warranted such. Shea Usani is not a person who is uh, who the government will claim to be under the apprehension of that he is going to uh, elope or abscond from the country, right? So I don't think yeah, there are ground, but such grounds I don't think they are constituted in the circumstances of 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 this case. Let me, let me also bring um, the reaction of uh, the former head of the Nigerian uh, Human Rights Commission, Chidi Odinkalu. He's taking to Twitter, and I will quote. He says, the EFCC cannot arrest a person on allegations of extortion and afterward get, get um, a 14-day detention order to investigate, end of quote, part first. And then he went on to say, I want to make myself clear. What's happening to Shew Sani is deplorable. He also said that, it's not criminal process. It's called decree number two. Isn't that too strong? What's your take? Well, I, I share this, the, the I share the views of uh, the the learned professor. I share his views. Um, if you have if you have alleged some if you alleged if, if you alleged that someone has committed a crime offense of extortion, what do you do? You bring a charge before the court and you arraign the person in court. Let him take his plea. After taking his plea, and then he can also apply for, apply for his bail. That is the normal process that we were taught. You don't accuse someone of committing an offense and then get an order to keep him in detention for 14 days. What are you keeping him for, for 14 days for? You understand? So I agree that it's deplorable and it's a clear case of a, a, a reenactment of the decree uh, no, 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 number two, as it were. So for those that might not understand, what's that decree number two? Okay, the criminal two was uh, probably the decree that was used by the Muhammad Buhari regime in 1980, uh, in, in uh, 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 when he was a military leader. It was a decree that he enacted that was basically used to keep uh, those who uh, uh, the pro democracy pro democracy activists, keeping them in detention for uh, as long as as they mm -hmm. can, uh, so to actually give the the, the the government of the day Britain. Okay, um, I'll still refer to another statement, but this time, Stanis, uh, the, he, he issued a statement uh, today. Part of that statement was, I have made my statement and provided all my facts against their package of lies, and I demand the EFCC to make public all the shits of our statements and supporting documents for the world to see. Will the EFCC, in your opinion, countenance this with a response by bringing all the accusation, all the facts, all the conversation they've had as it affects this case to the public? Oh, well, I don't imagine that the commission would do that because it, it's, it's, it's going to be against the, 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 the way the, the work. So why would Sani be Speaking asking for that, something that he knows might not? Well, Sani, will, he's, just, he's just a person who is aggrieved and reacting the way uh, he reacting to the way he feels, right? But uh, those documents, uh, perhaps, I'm, I'm sure he knows, are already exhibits to be used in court. Eventually, in the event this matter eventually gets uh, to plenary trial. So the courts, the EFCC would not divulge such uh, um, exhibits. Which, are, which contain confidential or classified information of some persons, you understand, except, be, except based on an order of court that orders them to publish. Without that, I don't think the commission would um, publish those documents. But it only goes to show that um, um, Sani um, has no skeleton in his cupboard. And like I said, I can vouch for his, for his integrity. He has no skeleton in his cupboard, and um, I'm sure he has thrown the challenge back at the commission to come and make, do, to make good the so-called um, allegation of extortionism. Okay, still staying with that statement because he's the man in the eye of the storm at the moment. Um, he claims he has never uh, discussed anything with the Al Haji, uh, the ASD that was mentioned in the case, um, on any form of bribe 
uh, or gratification to be given to a judge or any EFCC official. What do we know about this allergy, Sani Dauda? Do you fancy that um, uh, Sani's claim uh, that he's been sponsored has any backing, really? Because a lot of persons haven't heard of that name until today. Yes. Well, um, I wouldn't know how uh, this man came into the picture, but he appears to be at the center he appears to be at the center of it all, to the extent that he was a person that was said to have authored the petition upon which the EFCC um, acted. Now, um, you know, in most of these cases, you, the, 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 the facts that are always available to the media are not actually the full yeah. story you get. But I believe that whatever would have led him to write a petition that eventually ropes in uh, the former senator, I believe they must have had, at some point, they must have had at some point in time some relationship. Whether that relationship has been exploited by this man to actually um, to spite the, the senator, uh, we will be finding out. But I, I, I imagine that they have done stuff together in the past, but which were not meant to be, which were not uh, uh, without any intent of, to you no know, without any illicit content as it were. But maybe this man is not trying to put some twists to whatever they had in the past to also perhaps spite um, the, 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 the former senator. Uh, but I, eventually, if this matter gets to court, I'm sure uh, some of this information will, will get to know more and then um, see the extent of culpability of the former senator. Before I let you go this evening, I wanted to talk about this very common sense kind of question, I'm sure. A lot of persons know Sheo Sani, even if you don't know a lot about his legislative activities. We see his reaction to national, national issues, issues yeah. you know, bringing if, the, if um, something is going wrong or something that the people are clamoring against, he speaks up and all of that. Common sense would say a man like that, knowing fully well that people or his uh, let's say now, detractors will be looking for avenues to, you know, rope him in and put him and get pounce on him if he make a mistake. Would he be as silly, to use the word, as to throw away himself in such a manner as to be prosecuted? Uh, well, does he have a chance? Does he have the? I don't think he has. Um, he has a say in the in the in, in whether he's going to be prosecuted or not. I don't think he have a say in that. All that is needed for him to be prosecuted is for somebody to just say he did, to allege him to have committed. But why would he put himself in a situation like that that would make somebody feel that they have case, enough case to pounce on him because he is somebody who knows the intrigues of the political scene in this yeah, country? That's what I told you. As I said, I imagine him and the businessman, the Alhaji Sani Dauda, might have done, been involved in the past, but not in any illegitimate, not in any illegal way, right? But then, uh, perhaps because of giving his anti-government stance, we don't know who, we don't know the forces that are pushing the uh, the the, the complainants, that is, uh, the businessman. We don't know how the the, the, the the forces pushing him to the extent that he has found a twist to the relationship he shared with the former senator in the past just to get something on him to put him out there in the media for the wrong reasons, right? So and, uh, until this matter gets to court, we, we cannot uh, 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 speculate or conjecture on um, what actually played out uh, between them. But I want to vouch for the former senator that uh, at the end of the day he's going to come out of this uh, based on what we little we know of his but character. But then the damage would have been done. <laughs> Thank you very much for your you, thoughts. You're welcome. I appreciate you're welcome. it. Thank you. And of course... Thank you for watching so far. Well, we're not done yet. We'll go on a break for our plus package and uh, we'll be focusing on the oppression Amote, which was part of our conversation yesterday. When we return, I will give you my take. Stay with us. Security of their lives and properties should be of paramount importance. When we discuss the development potentials of our state and talk about investment opportunities and growing our internally generated revenue by exploring areas of comparative advantage, we remain keenly aware that we cannot achieve anything in a state of insecurity. When we were daily assaulted 
by a spate of kidnappings, banditry, armed robbery, across the length and breadth of Western Nigeria. We obviously sought succor in all the right places. And the mainstream security agencies did their best to arrest the situation. This positional role is a parameter for measuring the degree of responsibility and efficiency of government. The swift and prompt manner we start West governors have responded to the security challenges ravaging the, re the region. The political solution was preferred, among others, to the rising incident of kidnapping, banditry, and armed robbery on our highways and rural roads within the region. It is important that we emphasize that Amotepun is only one of the many solutions to the socio-economic challenges we face in this region. Here yeah, are from all the six states. All the six states. Each governor at the end of the day will go into his own vehicle from his own state and will The words of Nigeria's national anthem demands patriotism from the citizenry. But the hard truth is we cannot expect patriotic ideals and conduct from citizens who feel let down by her leaders. A simple analogy would be President Muhammad Buhari advising against medical tourism. And no, I am not digressing. He is the number one citizen of this country. And next to him are the various politicians who recycle themselves with the now famous term discussed this evening, cross capitalism to stay relevant in the political space. These are the people who lead us. Now, in my opinion, if we choose to continue to play this kind of politics, it means we continue to promote the notion, not only to the citizenry, but to the outside world, that the interests of the citizens have no role to play in the determination by politicians of the question whether they should remain on the political platform on which they sought the votes of the people and that the attainment of political office, rather than being the means to an end, is the end in itself. And that's my take tonight. Thank you for watching today's program. Please share your thoughts on our social media handles at Plus TV Africa. And you can also find me on Twitter at Felicity underscore E. Until next time, be well. <laughs>